This new Home Assistant release has brought some really exciting AI quality of life improvements that move us closer than ever to a truly intelligent private smart home. But the news doesn't stop there. We'll also dive deep into OpenAI's brand new model. And no, I'm not talking about GPT-5. I'm talking about the new open source model GPT-OSS that you can run locally on your computer to control your smart home. Say goodbye to Google Assistant, Alexa, and I guess, Siri? And if you're ready, let's go. But first, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. They are not just any PCB manufacturer. They are the one-stop online manufacturer with 24-7 customer service. PCBWay provides lightning fast PCB fabrication and assembly, along with offering synthetic printing and CNC machining. They provide the easiest way to make your projects come to life. Whether you're a student tinkering in your garage, or a system engineer working on the next week thing, PCBWay has your back. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. First up, we now have the option to create custom sensors using the new AI task action. This allows us to create sensors for almost anything an AI can process. As shown in the release notes, one user integrated the vision capabilities of Gemini to create a chicken counter using a simple snapshot from a security camera. This is incredibly powerful although we need to remember that AI might not be perfectly suited for all use cases, so your mileage may vary. The Home Assistant team also put a simple blueprint together that will allow you to analyze footage from a camera using AI and print the output to the system logs. This is perfect for testing your ideas before creating a full automation. You just need a motion sensor, a camera, and to add your specific instructions into the extra instructions field to test it out. Using that example, I already created my own personal content sensor. For this, I had to edit the media content ID the instruction, the structure, and then the state result so you can grab the data for what I set on the structure. And with that, now I have a sensor that allows me to know how many people are present in my living room. And this I can easily integrate into my automations. Next, we have one of the greatest ideas I could have wished for. It's not a full automation assistant, at least not yet, but I'm talking about the new suggest with AI button. This feature not only suggests a name and description for the automation you are creating, but also adds categories and labels based on the ones you already have configured in your Home Assistant instance. To activate it, first, you need to go to System, then General, scroll down, and select an AI provider from the drop-down menu. I have the Google AI and Olama integrations configured, but any of the official integrations should already support the new AI task entities. Then just click Save. Now, if I go to an automation and click on Rename, I will be able to see the new suggest with AI button. Right now, I'm using the GPTOS SS20B model from OpenAI, running locally via Olama on my RTX 1490. And it seems like it doesn't work well with this functionality yet. This appears to be an issue specific to this model, because I did manage to get it working using Gemma 312B and DeepSeek R18B. To fix this, just go to Settings, Integrations, then go to Olama, and here go to Olama AI task. Although you could use any of the cloud services to make this work, you should be aware that this feature sends a significant amount of information about your system to the LLM. If you aren't comfortable sharing entire automations, area names, categories, and labels with a cloud service, you're better off sticking with a locally based service. You can watch this video where I show you how to install Olama to set up your own local AI for use with Home Assistant. One of the things I struggle with the most is giving proper names and descriptions to my automations. It's a good habit that I try to maintain, so having an AI that can at least give me an overview so I can make some modifications or just correctly classify my automations is a huge win for me. Lastly, we have a new AI integration. Open Router has been added as a provider, so now we can easily try more than 400 different LLMS. Open Router is a cloud service that allows you to try pretty much any available model, from OpenAI and Anthropic to many free open models. Now, let's talk about the new OpenAI models, the GPT-OSS family. This is their new open source model that you can run locally on your own server. Born from a partnership between OpenAI and NVIDIA, its goal is to make powerful AI accessible on local RTX PCS, which is a fantastic development for the open source community. It supports a context length of up to 131,072 tokens, one of the longest available for local models. This will allow us to have large, context-rich conversations that can gather a lot of information to resolve complex tasks. For this release, the OpenAI team has worked closely with Olama to offer the easiest way to run these models locally. You just download the new Olama app, pull the model, and you're ready to go. They even added a basic internet search functionality to the Olama app 
so that the AI can get updated information to answer your questions. This isn't available through the Olama Home Assistant integration yet, but it should be possible to add some MCP servers to expand the functionality of our assistants in the future. The 20B model has been trained to work great with only 16 gigabytes of VRAM, so any NVIDIA card with 16 gigabytes or more should be able to run it at pretty decent speeds. I'm running it on my RTX 4090, and it goes super fast. So far, I've been able to use it to execute complex tasks without an issue. It can easily infer from context the right information it needs to run any task. If it needs additional information, it asks for it, and you're able to have a natural conversation with it. It's a bigger model than I expected, but this seems like the first model that makes me think a fully local, powerful AI setup is truly possible. I'm going to move my Home Assistant installation to my main computer so I can run many AI tasks and see how well it performs for real-world, day-to-day use. As always, I have updated the prompt to make it time and date aware and to add instructions on how to interpret and use the sensors and scripts that I've made available to it. The prompt I use will be available on my website for our subscribers. Just use your Google account to log in. So let me know in the comments what you think about these new AI features. And if you want help with Home Assistant, you can book a one-hour meeting with me. As you can see, I don't take no for an answer that easily when it comes to a problem. I find the solution. So if you have some configuration or network design problem, automation driving you crazy, I surely can help you find a solution that works for you. If you like my work, please consider becoming a member on Patreon like all these amazing people. If you can become a member, you can always donate whatever you like using the button on our website. And if you can do that, don't worry. Just remember to leave a comment on the video and share it with your friends. I truly appreciate all your support. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!